Good morning, church. We are Medina United Church of Christ Congregational, and no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. My friends, welcome, whether you're a first-time visitor or a long-time member, if you're live or live stream, wherever you are in time or space, you're right where you need to be. It's good to see you all. This is my last Sunday for two weeks. <laughs> Wait a second. It's a little nerve-wracking, though, to be honest. I really like being here on a Sunday and throughout the week with you, but I figure it's good. You give me these vacations to take it, so we're going to take it. And you were fine 198 years before I came. You'll be fine for two weeks. You'll be fine. You got Julie Gilliland will be bringing next Sunday's worship. You're going to want to be here for this. Our association, the Living Waters Association, went on a civil rights pilgrimage where Julie met a lot of new friends and some friends of mine, and I was a little jealous she got to hang out with them, frankly speaking. She's going to bring word of that journey. Following that Sunday, we got Ryan Collins back there, all the way in the back, the man in the orange. He will be bringing word about our wise designation. This is a designation for mental health by the UCC, so it's like a mental health Sunday that Ryan will be leading us in. You are in good hands. You're in great hands that you're going you're gonna to want to be here for. I'll be back on Sunday, July 31st, and I'm like looking forward and saying, well, what, what is Jesus talking about today? Money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say. It's three weeks away. So let's, when you're wondering what to say and things are three weeks away and you're a little nervous about embarking on a journey, just shut your eyes. Lower your shoulders. Lengthen the back of your neck. There's nothing you have to do right now. The pew supports you, your couch, wherever you are. If you're walking and on the podcast, just one foot in front of the other, you're doing fine. You're doing great. And just breathe. Just breathe. When you don't know what to say, a breath or two or three is a good thing to center yourself. So let's take a deep breath in and out. Take one more, the deepest you've taken all week, in and out with a sigh. <sighs> it's our first prayer together, a prayer of Ruach. So lift your chin high, take a look around at your neighbor. Look who else showed up here. That's pretty cool, they're here too. And let us lift a sign of peace to our neighbor and say, hey neighbor. Hey neighbor. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let us stand and rise, embody our spirit, and sing the first four verses of Bring Many Names.
worship, Jesus Storyteller, we ask you direct questions. You tell us about a dude in the ditch. We wonder what heaven is like, since you have knowledge of it. We demand to know who our neighbor is. Dig out our ears and help us listen to you in this worship. was beautiful. Our scripture lesson today is from Luke. It's on page 67. You'll immediately recognize it as the parable of the Good Samaritan. And in some of the old translations, they would have a little footnote or something to say that Jews and Samaritans did not associate with each other. It's Luke 10. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, well, what is written in the law? 
What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? So Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan while traveling came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved to pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave him to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Now, which of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And he said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God. So our Jesus vibes is where the children act out and post on YouTube various videos. So we're going to do an impromptu Jesus Vibes right now as the children come forward. I need three volunteers from the children. Samuel. Brendan, you wanna be be dog number one? Okay, you can be a dog. Madeline. I did you, I got a perfect part for you. Okay, the rest of the children come forward and I need a line right down the middle of the sanctuary. Just a line like right here and you go this way. So let's stand right here. And the next person's gonna stand there, Leah. Come on, Eve, you can do this. Come on, Eve, come on, Eve you got it. Come on, come on. Okay. Madeline, I need you to stand right here, and you're going to be a tree, a beautiful, majestic tree. Yay, a tree. Okay, the rest of you, little line straight down this way. You guys are playing the role of a fence post, so give me a very good fence. You're a fence. Are you a fence, or are you just a fence? Okay, Sam and Brendan, you are two dogs. So once upon a time, there were two dogs. Yep. And another dog. You're a dog, Brendan. Can you give me a good wolf? That's good. That's a good pant. So once upon a time, there were two dogs, and they were neighbors. And every morning when their people let them out, they would run to the fence, and they would bark at each other. So bark, 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 bark. But the fence was between them, so they couldn't get at each other. And while we humans only heard woof, 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 they were shouting dog obscenities to each other. I'm going to rip your face off. You're lucky that this fence is here, and you, oh, you're just horrible. Bark, 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 bark. I get better kibble than you. My owners are better. So the dogs went inside for the night, and that night a storm happened, and the tree fell and made a big opening, a big opening in the fence. There's a big opening in the fence. Oh, no, there's wood everywhere. There's a big tree. Look what the tree did. Nice job. And here comes the, (laughs) perfect. And here comes the dogs out, and they start to bark at each other, and instead they see the hole in the fence, and they look at each other face to face, and they leave. The end. What is that? Well done, well done. I love the acting. I love, what, what does that mean? What did that parable mean? It's not fun without a fence. That's, that's an interpretation. What else could that story mean? Uh-huh. 
Ajá. A tree crashed on the fence and it removed the separation. They didn't actually hurt each other like they said they would. That's, all of those are right. Sometimes there's something that comes between us and we feel divided from each other. And other times something happens and we see each other face to face for who we are and we understand. That's what good stories do and that's what I hope for all of you. So keep telling good stories and can you repeat after me for this prayer? You too. Let us pray. Dear God, God, remove from us us what separates us us. and help us us. see each other other. as you see us. us. We pray this in your many holy names. names. Amen. Now let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's give another hand for our Jesus vibes. Nice job. You can go downstairs. Thank you, Josie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I love it. Thanks. So we come now to our joys and concerns. We lift up Donna Graham, still suffering from shingles, for Betty Rieger in the hospital, for my cousin Mary Elizabeth Hammond healing. For Virginia Jondervan, who is still in Wadsworth altar care and suffered a setback. We lift up John Fleming, Joe Lennox's brother, who died on the 28th. We lift up the shooting of Jalen Walker and Akron and on the rest there for all involved. We lift up the flowers given by Diane Howard in memory of Brian. We lift up our birthdays for Jack Robb and Paul Desario, for Liliana Grandinetti, for Joe Donnelly and Barb Grimm, Tim Cochran, Bonnie Schumann, Jessica Manners, Pete Metzloff, I know that guy on the 15th, for Josh Fry and Laverne McGuire and Mark Maranko, for our anniversaries of Josh and Ellen Nolan, Gil and Karen Brucken, Sandy and Gary Holloway, Price Billicum is a Little League champion, so we lift up Price Billicum and his team. Way to go, Price. We lift up our Accessible to All and our Wise teams, which are printed in the bulletins about their good work. We lift up Marsha Gerhardt, who I thought uh, I was going to go for lunch tomorrow. She moved to Marietta on the 9th, so <laughs> she's closer with family, so that's good for Marsha. Good. Um, We lift up uh, Julie Gilliland and Ryan Collins and the words that they are preparing to bring to you. We lift up our music director search is at an end. We have hired and offered, and she has accepted, Jenny Cochran. You can check her out, her work, gatheringband.net. She brings a lot of energy here, so we're excited that. And an offer for the associate pastor has gone out. We'll see what happens. Gateway, gate, yep, that's right, gatewayband.net for Jenny. Um, we lift up the ordination of Matthew Hogue Smith, a mentee of mine. It's weird to say that it's not a mentor. I'm in the mentor stage, and Matthew is in the I'm being ordained today at North Ridgewell stage, and will be moving out to Connecticut as a pastor of prophetic witness out there in Connecticut. So blessings to Matthew. And finally, I was shopping in Bueller's yesterday, and Chandra came up. Chandra, who's on our live stream, I've never seen her before, and she's like, hey, you're Pastor Luke, right? And I'm like, yes. I love watching you. You've explained some things to me. Your church has reinterpreted church for me. All these great things. So we may see her someday, but she is on very much our live stream, which is, they are real people watching you. Good move 
on your part, thank you, Terry Rhodes and Matt and all the people who are back there, the Johns right now, running the live stream. It is your, it's getting the message out there, folks. So thank you. Good work on your part. Yay, church. Let's pray that that doesn't happen again. It's weird. If celebrities go through that all the time. <laughs> Not that, well, we should pray for them too. So let us join one another in a spirit of prayer. Lord of light, we thank you for the increased sunlight of summertime and all the opportunities we have to be outside. We give you thanks for nature, which is your first testament, and it is resplendent. If you are in the smiting mood, dear God, here's our list. Bugs, especially mosquitoes, hornets, and wasps. If you could smite those, that would be fine. And we ask your increase on the honeybee and the butterfly, and while not a bug is the size of a bug, the hummingbirds, give us glimpses to them and to their work. We ask that you bless all travelers and vacationers. We ask that you keep the lifeguards at the pools vigilant, that you protect the construction workers at the side of the road, that you calm the nerves and slow our speeding tendencies. We pray that each one find rest and slowness in this season. May we find Sabbath and draw closer to you, our God, our Christ, our Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, parables are not children's stories, nor are they nothing. They are very much something. They are well-designed strategic strikes on our senses. They are meant to inspire in thought and prod us into awareness. They are meant to provoke us and to indict us. So if you hear a parable and you're like, oh, isn't that sweet? That's not a parable. If you leave angered and a little bit guilty, that is a parable. The issue, however, according to Dr. A.J. Levine, Amy J. Levine, is that we're not hearing parables with first century ears, so we can miss the joke. Dr. Levine is a Jewish person, a Jewish philosopher and doctor that studies the Christian scriptures through a Jewish lens. She is amazing, provocative, she's worth checking out. Her insights built this sermon. In fact, she does a six-minute sermon that I linked to in the paper copy and the online version that I'm going to do in 15 minutes. She's amazing. So her insight to the parable of the Good Samaritan is invaluable. So the lawyer asked Jesus a question, and I used to think of it as a snarky question, but it's not. It's a technical question. Who is my neighbor? See, neighbors are ones who have the same rights and responsibilities we do. That is a neighbor, legally. So, in the States, we have a neighbor to the north, Canada, but they do not have the same rights as we do legally. So they're not technically our neighbor. A neighbor is those who are under the same rights and responsibility as we do. So our neighbor here in Ohio is Brunswick and Wadsworth and Whiter, Michigan, West Virginia. Those are our neighbors. This entire United States, those are our neighbors. They're under the same rights and responsibilities as we are. We vote in the same elections. We cannot vote in Canadian elections, nor they in ours. So our neighbors legally are those under the same law. That's good. That's a good technical question that the lawyer is looking for. So Jesus could parse nuance and give an equally technical response about law and identity and responsibility, but Jesus does what Jesus does. Jesus hurls a parable at the poor lawyer about to indict and provoke him. A man is beaten up by bandits. He's left in a ditch at the side of the road. A priest and a Levite walk by. No excuse is given as to why they walk by, nor would any excuse be given. They should have helped. They didn't. End of story. There is no law that prohibits them from helping. They should have helped. They didn't. But it is the Reverend, Martin, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who uses his theological imagination as to why. 
The priest and the Levite asked themselves, if I stopped to help this man, what would happen to me? For there are bandits on the road. Whereas the Samaritan asks, if I do not stop and help this man, what would happen to him? For there are bandits on the road. And that has made all the difference. It's hard to know who the Samaritans are for us here in the 21st century as there are hospitals and laws and car insurance companies named after the Good Samaritan. It's a good thing in our culture, but it is not so in the first century. Dr. Levine points out that this is a triplet in the first century. We are in the middle of a triplet here. A priest, a Levite, should be followed by the word Israelite. You got the priest, the height of what all good Jew respires to be. You have the Levite, which is descended of a tribe, one of Jacob's kids, Levi. And then there's the rest of us, the Israelites. That's the triplet. That's the rule of three. And the rule of three is, if you know the first two words, you should know the third. So we're going to try a little audience participation that Dr. Levine does in her talk, a game that we'll try to replicate. I'll give you two names, You should get the third. So I need to hear you. There's no screen between us. You shouldn't be able to mess this up. We'll do it twice, though. Okay, here we go. Dr. Levine gives the first two words, Larry, Moe, and Curly. Jews, by the way. We'll try the second one for those who missed out on the first. So Larry, Curly, Moe, two more. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Both are correct. You did it. You know the triplets. So we should know the triplet as well. But Dr. Levine states that going from priest, Levite, to Samaritan would be like going from Larry, Moe, to Hitler, or father, son, to Satan. It was unthinkable what Jesus did. And the point of this The point of the parable is we are not the Samaritan. We are the one in the ditch. And we're looking at someone we've been told all our lives is a danger to us and might kill us as they walk up to us. Instead, they walk up to us and save us. Jesus' parable features our arch enemy who bears the image of God and saves us. That's what parables do. They provoke and indict. I wonder who the enemy is for us. I wonder who the enemy is for me. It might be a Westboro Baptist congregant who's out there and has their sign of hate. And I get hit by a car and they throw the sign down and they come over and they tend to me. Unthinkable. They're the type of Christians that make God sound rather petty and small and nasty, and frankly, they make my job harder. Or I wonder if it's the Russian soldier who sees me broken and lying in a ditch that walks over and tends to me. Who would the enemy be for you? For parables provoke and indict. So we're going to try a couple out here. (laughs) If you're not feeling anxious enough already, here we go. This one comes from The Orthodox Heretic by Peter Rollins, a favorite of mine that hopefully will be in the church library soon downstairs that you can check out his work. And I commend you this book. Peter Rollins has us imagine a world where following Christ is the creed to be subversive and illegal. And you, my good friends, have been dragged from this sanctuary over in front of the judge across the street. The judge hears the evidence that you attend church regularly. You go to weekly Bible study. You read. He reads your Christian blog and looks at the well-worn pages of your Bible and then declares you not guilty. Yay, you think, until you're like, wait a second, and you become guilty. Indignant, and you hear yourself shouting, Wait, none of that counts? You arrested me in church. What's the deal? To which the judge replies, 
The court is indifferent to your Bible reading and church attendance. It has no concern for worship and words with a pen. Continue to develop your theology and use it to paint a picture of love. We have no interest in such armchair artists who spend their time creating images of a better world. We exist only for those who would lay down that brush and their life in a Christ-like endeavor to create a better world. So, until you live as Christ and his followers did, until you challenge this system and become a thorn in our side, until you die for yourself and offer your body to the flames, until then, my friend, you are no enemy of this court. The end. How did that hit you? How did that make you feel? Should make you feel like the original hearers of the Good Samaritan. It challenges us to reject our armchair religion that relishes in comfortable truths but passes by on the other side. Instead, we're invited to stop and be as Christ to the world and throw ourselves headfirst into serving God with all that we are and all that we have. So if that didn't do the job, here's another one. I gave this at Betty Palmquist's memorial. So for those of you who are there, if it sounds familiar, it's because it is. Once there was a Scottish woman who wanted to produce an illuminated manuscript just like those crazy Irish across the way. We could do something as equally as good as the Book of the Kells. So an illuminated manuscript of the Bible locally produced by artists here that would create community and restore pride and meaning. And so this woman sells all her goods and she collects money from friends and family and strangers and just as she has the amount saved, a huge fire sweeps through her community and burns down many homes and she spends her Bible funds instead on rebuilding homes and providing furniture and provision and builds back the town. Afterwards, she starts saving up again. And after years and years and years, twice as long as the first time, she finally has enough. She finally has enough just as a famine sweeps through the community. So she spends all her saved up Bible money on feeding her community so that children can grow up healthy and strong and working folks can continue to work and the elderly are cared and provided for. Finally, at the end of her life, she has enough money to make the illuminated Bible. She pays for it, and just as the book is completed, she dies. And they say at the memorial, at the memorial we will show you this book she spent her life saving up three times it took. And at her memorial, the church was packed. You couldn't get into the church. In fact, you couldn't find a hotel room. People were staying at relatives and long-lost relatives and complete strangers' homes. And the community at the memorial said that the woman translated the Bible beautifully three times. And the first two times were the most beautiful. So, my friends, my church, my fellows in Christ, go and do likewise. Amen.
We bring our gifts out of the abundance we have received to benefit our neighbor and bless the world. We will rise in body or spirit and sing praises to you. join me in the dedication. May this be our two denarii, given to you, innkeeper of us all. Look after our neighbor, and when we return, we will reimburse you for any extra expense. Help us in our time, talent, and treasure to be a good neighbor and have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I commend you the pilgrim messenger at the back of the bulletin, and especially the back of the bulletin, the caring neighbor's meditation from National. Worth your time, worth your reading. Take this home. May it be with you the rest of the week as you look for God in neighbor, every single neighbor. Yes, even that one. Please join me in the benediction. Be filled with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Bear fruit in every good work as you grow in the knowledge of God. Be strong in God's love and give thanks to the one who has given you a share in the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And the church says, Amen.